So how to boost global cooperation to secure the common prosperity in digital age? I told you that I consider the ecosystem very important uh, as we try to uh, see how digitization, AI and, and all kinds of other technologies, you know, 3D printing and some that we haven't even thought about, help us to advance uh, uh, our innovation and production base. Yeah. Uh, innovation and production are the things that make a country rich, that make people more comfortable, that uh, allow higher wages, a higher standard of living. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, so in, own, in my own terms, I try to using collaboration with people in China uh, uh, to write a guide to help SMEs use the digital economy better, mm -hmm. to come to grips with you know, strange concepts such as what the heck is a digital twin. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm doing this myself yes. uh, because I, I live here, I work here, uh, I, I want this place to succeed. Uh, and internationally, of course, we need to collaborate a lot more. There are two uh, geographical examples I want to give you. And, um, and then also perhaps uh, a way to do this. I think uh, China needs to collaborate a lot more with the ASEAN countries, with, with its neighbors. And uh, mankind, in fact, has unbelievable challenges which go far beyond the day. You know, we have a, a real climate catastrophe ahead of us. We have a, a food insecurity situation. We have just realized that we can have a, another pandemic uh, uh, of proportions that we never thought possible. Yeah. And we, we have the potential to create, as people uh, of the world, to create another one unexpectedly somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So we, we have challenges that far surpass this blip yes. of the current dispute. Could you please explain to us how does a digital economy going to restore the world economy and provide new driving forces? Well, number one, the decisions about this are far above our, uh, our uh, rank. Mm -hmm. But there are also far above, I think, the rank of an individual country. Yeah. Uh, the digital economy is an unstoppable force. Mm. Uh, the only choice we have is to what extent we want to participate in this digital economy. Mm. Uh, and now, you don't need to tell Chinese people about digitization because uh, Chinese people have a, a, a great curiosity about things. They are keen to try something out, be it food or smartphone. Um, so other than in some other places, you don't need to teach them about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also looking for the 11th person who will do something else. Yeah. So if, if somebody realizes that a hot pot is a great idea, suddenly you have 10 hot pot restaurants. Now I'm looking for that one person to open that other restaurant, which is not hot pot. The 11th person opens a small place where they dispose of edible oil. Mm, okay. Because, you know, it, it, as soon as you have 10 hot, hot pot shops, they have too much edible oil, mm. right? Yeah. That they have stuff that really needs to go into the green technology area. Mm -hmm. uh, please don't reuse, and we know about that one. But <laughs> but uh, it needs to go into the green technology area. So suddenly the 11th doesn't need to be a restaurant. The 11th can be somebody who takes care of the refuse of the 10. Yes. Let me tell you that people have to risk it. Yeah, uh, um, yeah let me start with a bit of the past and then the future. Yeah. At, at my totally insignificant university in Wuhan, mm -hmm. I founded a group for young female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because I saw that you know, the girls were always cleverer than the boys, they were better at studies, but they were lousy at founding their own firms and doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. the, bo the boys just had that totally un un unfounded confidence that they were the born entrepreneurs. Girls didn't have that confidence. But then there is the point, we have a problem at the moment that we, we have huge youth unemployment um, in, in, in the more formal sectors in, uh, and whether we like it or not, we need to look for new opportunities, new ideas to make a living. Yeah. And that uh, cannot mean lying flat. That means going to do something, taking the initiative, 
think hard about what, what you're going to do. And very often this starts with little things. And perhaps we should do, do a special session about this. Agriculture is the one area that is going to change most. And how can the digital transformation going to empower the real economy, especially the manufacturing industries? Uh, please allow me to be slightly arrogant. The, the problem that I see, I, I have perhaps visited 200 factories in China over the last six or seven years. Uh, the problems that I see is that people look for examples, but they don't know how to find good examples to follow, follow and go to the next step. So very often they will invest in something that they want to show, but that something has no relationship to what they do. A snazzy machine to which they got a grant, a subsidy, a snazzy robot which stands there and does this all day. The thing that would actually help and which I want to encourage both in the academic world but also in the world of enterprises yeah. is that people help each other and work together. You know, the, uh, um, very often people want to go and do things on their own and they embark on something they have no idea about, but they think it's a good idea. Yeah. And then they're lost because the good idea has cost them several million yuan mm -hmm. and they're nowhere. So we have a, a, a tradition that we go to our neighbors and our neighbors are uh, also trying something out, then we help each other and we try to incorporate that new thing mm -hmm. into the process often the production process of something else. And uh, it, it may not be radical, but it's certainly effective. So um, pe people are all looking for that uh, unbelievable innovation. Yeah. And they forget that a very important part of innovation is optimization, mm. doing things better yeah. and doing them well.